Good morning. This is assignment eight, contour integration. This assignment is very very important and expected one. We have to prove that the integral over one minus cos x over x square from zero to infinity dx is equal to pi by two, right? And because I'm having one minus cos x in the numerator, so for f z. What I have to write in the numerator? All right, one is as it is, then negative sign. All right, then cos x will be changed into e the power iota z, right? And denominator is at z square. Very fine. We have to just change sine and cosines in e the power iota m z. Here m is one, right? Rest we have to write as it is. So if it is one minus cos x, just write one minus e the power iota z, and denominator remains the same but in terms of z. So we have to integrate this f z along c, where c is a contour indented at z equal to, putting the denominator equal to zero, and on the real axis we find z equal to zero. So we have to indent the contour at z equal to zero. And because there are no other point lying inside the contour, we have only z equal to zero on the real axis. So the complete integral over f z dz is equal to zero. Now, since f z is analytic inside and on C, so by Cauchy's theorem, this integral over C f z dz is equal to zero. There is no point inside the contour. If there is a point. If there lie any point inside the contour, we have to calculate the residue for that point first. Then apply the Cauchy's residue. Uh, then we apply the Cauchy residue theorem, right? And since there is no point in the contour, we just have to apply the Cauchy's theorem, and that says that integral over C F Z is a complete integral is zero. All right. Now let's split the C in these integrals. And if you look at the contour, the integral is first along real axis from negative r to negative rho, then along this semicircle gamma having the radius rho, then from rho to r, and then along the semicircle tau in the upper half plane, we have these four integrals. This along tau, this will be zero by Jordan's lemma, of course, and this we have to just we have we are going to calculate. And then I will merge these two integrals after letting rho tends to zero and r tends to infinity. So let's find the second integral. Now limit rho tends to zero integral over gamma f z d z. The formula is iota times theta two minus theta one. That is zero minus pi. Limit z tends to where the contour is indented at z equal to zero. And then this is z minus this zero into f of z. So this is minus pi iota limit z tends to zero z into this is one minus e the power iota z over z square. Cancel this one z with this minus pi iota. All right. If I put z equal to zero here, I get zero by zero form. So I'm going to use the L'Hopital's rule now. Just derivate numerator and denominator with respect to z. So this will become negative iota e the power iota z over one. And now if I put the value of z over here, I get minus pi iota into this will become all right. Minus iota, which is equal to minus pi because iota iota is, sorry, this is iota iota is, uh, I discovered that is negative one. So this negative will cancel with this and iota square is negative one. So this is minus pi. Fine. All right. Now limit r tends to infinity for now this tau f z d z. So this is equal to putting the value of f z, and now just splitting these separately. This is 
1 over z square dz minus this integral tau e the power iota z over z square dz. Right? So applying the formula for this tau, I'm having iota pi minus 0 limit z tends to infinity z into 1 over z square. Right? Uh, then limit r tends to infinity integral over tau e the power iota z over z square dz. Sorry, this is limit r tends to infinity. So this is pi iota and this z will cancel out with this z and I get the limit r tends to infinity 1 over z then limit r tends to infinity tau e the power i the z over z square dz and because 1 over z and 1 over z square these are tending to 0 as z tends to infinity so 1 over z is also tending to 0 and 1 over z square is also tending to 0 as z tends to <coughs> infinity. This is Jordan's lemma. So because 1 over z square is tending to 0 uniformly as z tends to infinity, also 1 by z2. And this is mirror function in the upper half plane as it has no singularity there. So this, this is complete. These two are equal to 0 by Jordan's lemma. For Jordan's lemma, we always apply limit r tends to infinity. But for the gamma, we apply rho tends to zero. For smaller semicircle, radius is tending to zero. For the larger semicircle, the semicircle which are indented, the contour, where the contour is indented, that semicircle, for that semicircle, the radius tends always to zero. <coughs> but for the bigger one, semicircle tau, a radius always tending to infinity. So this is the difference only. And all right, that is zero. Now letting rho tends to zero and r tends to infinity in one equation, this one, this one. This integral is 0 and this way just calculated minus pi. We just put the value over here and merging these two integrals together. But before that, just let, let's turn r tends to infinity and rho tends to 0. We get minus infinity to 0 and then from 0 to infinity. So this is minus infinity to 0 f of x dx second integral we get the value as minus pi and then from 0 to infinity f of x dx and by Jordan's lemma fourth integral is 0 I have already explained so this is equal to 0 because by Cauchy's theorem the complete integral is 0 taking this pi to the other side and merging these two integrals together we get minus infinity to infinity and putting the value of fx as 1 minus cos of x over x square dx is equal to pi. And because this is your even function, so this is changed to 0 to infinity twice. 1 minus cos of x over x square dx is equal to pi right all right now taking this two to the other side we get our required result which is integral from zero to infinity one minus cos x over x square dx is equal to pi by two finally all right thank you so much god bless you all to subscribe the channel for the latest videos thank you